Sea lions charge towards people at La Jolla Cove. Ticks can attach anywhere. They really like hair lines. A tick disease kills over a dozen people south of the border. It gives me a purpose for my pain. And beauty to the streets knows that when you're down on your luck, there's no better feeling than a hot meal, hygiene products, and a hug. Heat continues across San Diego County in the form of a heat advisory and excessive heat warning. To add on to that, we've got plenty of fog to kick off your morning. That comes with a dense fog advisory. It is 6 a.m on Tuesday, July 25th. You're up with CBS 8. Today, the Chula Vista City Council is considering buying and converting a motel into a permanent housing site for the homeless. Thanks for being here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connors and I'm Dana Marie McNichol filling in for Netta Arampour. Now, if approved, this would be the first motel to house and give safe parking initiatives in South County. The Palomar Motel is on Walnut Avenue just east of the five. Now, if purchased, the motel would be able to house 31 residents and more with the attached parking lot as an overnight safe parking site. It would cost about seven million dollars to purchase and another six million to convert it. That's all according to a city staff report. This comes after Chula Vista police closed Harborside Park in April, forcing dozens of homeless out. Several parents called for this, saying the park is near an elementary school. Homeless advocates criticized this decision, saying the homeless had nowhere to go. This morning, a road is closed in Valley Center because of a broken pipe and a large sinkhole. Happened yesterday afternoon on Coal Grade Road between Miller Road and Coal Grade Lane. Chop right overhead and you can see there's uh, water just gushing out right here. The road flooded. Not clear what caused this, but you could see a big hole in what we're told is a high pressure water pipe. Right now we don't know how long the road will be closed or when repairs will be finished. This morning we are learning the trial for Larry Miliette, who is accused of killing his wife Maya, will not start now until 2024. The trial is now set for January 16th, three years after the Chula Vista mother was last seen. Larry says he needs more time to figure out how to pay his defense team. The trial was initially set for October after a judge ruled there was enough evidence for him to stand trial for Maya's alleged murder. Maya has not been seen or heard from since January of 2021. Larry has pleaded not guilty. And this viral video shows two aggressive sea lions at La Jolla Cove. You can see the sea lions barking and charging at other sea lions. People panicked. Even some ran away quickly. Conservationists say this is a good reminder to keep a distance and not irritate the animals. In the sea lion world, they identify their territory by pushing the other one out of it. And whoever's bigger wins. The San Diego City Council's Environmental Committee is working to keep that area closed all year long. Last week, the committee approved a recommendation asking for the change. It will now go to a full city council hearing. And this morning, SeaWorld's Electric Eel roller coaster is back open. It was actually shut down last month due to an injury. Now, a spokesperson told the Union Tribune the ride reopened last week. Last month, a man in his 20s was taken to the hospital for what Cal OSHA described as a left ankle deformity. The agency says safety signs and audio prompts have now been added to the ride. They've also changed, uh, made changes to the operating procedures and instructional videos. This morning, you can make a difference and make sure local families do not go hungry, especially our kids. CBS 8 is partnering with the San Diego Food Bank for the annuals Schools Out, Hunger's Not Summer Food Drive. CBS 8's Abby Black live at the San Diego Food Bank here this morning to explain how you can do donate, how we could all help out. Lots of options, Abby. There are so many options, Eric, and CBS 8 is such a proud partner for Schools Out Hunger's Not Annual Campaign. Live with us is Debbie Gilboy from Albertsons Vons. Debbie, we look forward to this every year. How important is it to be able to be a part of this campaign? Oh, it means the world to us. We're, we're all about giving back to the community, and so this is just the per perfect partnership for us with the San Diego Food Bank. And for those that are shopping at Vaughn's Albertsons, what can they do this week and then starting next week as well? So this week we've got the red barrels out in all of our stores. Just donate, buy and donate anything that you'd like out of the store. And then next week we'll have the, the bags ready. Uh, so you can donate bags or you can just make a, a cash donation at the register. Uh, we'll ring up any denomination that you'd like. But yeah, the bags are the easiest, best way to get the product to the food bank that they really want. 
And I'm an Albertson shopper, so I love every year when the cashier says, hey, do you want to donate? And I said, of course, because I feel like it's such an easy way just to give that fi five extra dollars or any kind of money that you may have. You can do more, you can do less, because that dollar really is stretched for so many families. It sure is. It's, it's the product that the food bank needs and wants and requests. So that we, we put these bags together at their request. And also another proud sponsor is PNC Bank, Alan Prohaska. How important is it to be able to be a part of this campaign? Uh, it's huge for us. This is our third year sponsoring the Schools Out, Hunger's Not, Food Drive. I mean, this is an easy one to get behind. It's for the kids. Um, a lot of people forget that during the school year, there are tens of thousands of kids in San Diego that get one to two meals a day from the school system. And those may be their only meals they're getting. So school gets out, these kids are at risk of going hungry. Um, we want our community to thrive, and so I think this is a really easy way for us to get involved and ensure we meet basic needs for people. Most definitely, because we're seeing inflation, and a lot of people can feel that their grocery bill is going up. For those that are struggling, it's even more important that we make sure that our kids, that there are, there's a, a dinner table, there's a, a meal for our dinner every night. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we feel inflation across every aspect of our lives, gas, housing, Food is one of them, and we think about the building blocks of making our community great, you know, safety, shelter, food. Food is a very easy one for us to all get behind with the grocery store at least once a week. I've got three kids. I'm at the grocery store probably three or four times a week. So when you're at checkout, donate five bucks, donate 20 bucks, uh, donate non-perishables in the red bins. It's pretty easy to do. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alan. And there's a QR code as well that you can use. Just put it right up to your screen or to your phone screen. So then you can find out all the different ways that you can donate. Again, next week, that $5 donation bag, the pre-fill bag starts. But you can start donating now your perishable items or you can go online and donate as well. Eric? Yeah, Abby, I know you're right next to that peanut butter there. I know that that is something that they always want people to donate, right? Because that goes a long ways. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, you can you can get these donated items when you're at the grocery store, but also, you know, look in your kitchen cabinet as well. I'm sure, sure you have some extra peanut butter that you probably bought that you never opened. Right. Um, and that would also, families say that, you know, what we may not think goes a long way, but families become very resourceful. Yeah. And so things like peanut butter, canned meats, um, canned vegetables and fruits, those really help our families to be able to subsidize and supplement some of their other groceries that um, they'll be able to eat be able to buy. Lots of ways to help out our community yeah. here. Thank you so much for that, Abby. Appreciate it. Let's turn Thank now you. to our ongoing heat wave impacting all of us here this morning. Several hiking trails remain closed because of the hot weather. The San Diego River Gorge, Cedar Creek Falls, Three Sisters Falls, and Eagle Peak Trails all will stay closed. Officials for the Cleveland National Forest say the decision is to help prevent heat related illnesses. And as I'm walking back, I trip. It just happened and I tripped because this part of the shoe right here was like this. It looked like this. That is how hot it is in Arizona, folks. That is a librarian whose shoes melted. He says he was outside for 30 minutes. Right now, Phoenix is close to a new national record. The first U.S. city to average over 100 degrees for an entire month. Experts warn it's not just the air that's the concern either. Surface temperatures can get dangerously hot. Doctors say quick contact can cause first degree burns at 118 degrees, blisters at 131, and skin tissue can be destroyed at 162. In Arizona, surface temperatures can reach 180 degrees. And keep in mind, uh, at those temperatures, when you step into the car, you just you ask the kids to get into the car. Anything they touch is going to be hot, especially the metal seat belts, metal linings belt. in the car. Mm -hmm. You got to literally turn the car on, get the AC going for quite a while before yes. you can even get in the car. Just like in the winter time, when you preheat your car, yeah. exactly. you have to do the exact same thing for the summer. It is amazing to see just how long it takes to really feel the cool air come in. You can sit yeah. in that car for two, three minutes and just feel like you're sweating. Oh, before. I get down to the freeway and I'm yeah. still, is my air, I have panic attacks because I think my air conditioner is broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nope. like, taking a while today. to kick in. That hot out yeah. there. Yeah, uh, versus the coastline where things yeah. are very mild, yeah. comfortable. So we're going to continue to see that trend persist. And it starts off in our morning hours in a very similar way. We have dense fog 
from the coast all the way to our inland valleys. Limited visibility less than a mile right now for Oceanside, for Miramar, for Imperial Beach and Otay Mesa. Uh, when you make your way toward Ramona even, we're at seven miles along with Fallbrook. So you see how this is an issue not only plaguing your coast or the immediate coast, but also stretching for a pretty decent uh, area inland. We have a dense fog advisory that's in play. That is a new one that lasts through 9 a.m. today and also keep in mind doesn't really cover all that much time, right? It will expire at 9 a.m. today. We'll move on with our day. We'll have some clouds along the coastline and we'll have the sea breeze that will keep the coast a lot more mild and moderate. Orange on the screen shows a heat advisory that will last through 8 p.m. on Wednesday. This is one that we have clung on to for weeks now, about three weeks in total. Could go for another week, but it seems like it will be set to expire tomorrow. Excessive heat warning has the same expiration date Wednesday at 8 p.m. So why is the heat related alert watch warning, whatever you want to call uh, each of them says heat warning heat advisory. Those are all in effect inland because we've got that stretch of 90s, right? 91 inland 97 for the mountains, 114 for the deserts versus the coastline staying a lot more comfortable in the upper 70s with some AM clouds, more opportunities for PM sun in there. Walking out the door right now, this is the time to get the dog out to take that long walk or run with them or for you to get your exercise in because we're in the 60s. Clouds are pretty uh, generous to us right now, but we're going to warm up pretty quickly. So temperature change from 24 hours ago shows most spots are warmer, at least inland. Poway two degrees warmer, five degrees warmer in Ramona, but a little bit cooler along the coast. So things are pretty similar in, within a five de degree or so discrepancy of where we were at this time yesterday. Uh, the heat remains through tomorrow and then we'll start to cool down toward the weekend and early next week. Let's take a look at your reporter wait times right now. 611 on the clock and we want to see what that San Ysidro port of entry looks like. Whew, that's going to take you a while. 140 minutes, about a two hour and 20 minute wait right now. Otay Mesa port of entry is going to be an hour 15, so you are expected to have some pretty decent delays getting into San Diego County. Once you're in San Diego County, CBS8.com slash traffic can get you the latest on what our highway conditions look like. Dana Marie and Eric. All right, thank you so much, Evan. Still ahead, could a deadly tick disease in Baja California spread to San Diego? Plus, California is now the number one state that wealthy Americans are leaving. We'll explain why and tell you where they're going. And they didn't win the jackpot, but a San Diegan still won big with the Powerball.